study review or whatever I decide to call this segment. Basically, I'm going to start a new series on this channel. It's going to be brief, five to 10 minute videos. Hopefully I can stay within that time limit where I basically just briefly go over new studies that come out that are relevant to fields of discussion that I typically talk about on this channel. If there's a new study that comes out and you want me to talk about it or you think it's relevant, send me either an email at uh, roserist404 at gmail.com or send me a message on Discord. You can find the link to the Discord server in the description of this video. And you can just go there and find a message by me or look at me as the, the owner of the server and send me a direct message there and I can take a look at it. And yeah, that's the purpose of this new series. And today we're going to be talking about a study that came out yesterday titled Fatal Police Violence by Race and State in the USA, 1980 to 2019, a network meta uh, regression. Background. The burden of fatal police violence is an urgent public health crisis in the USA. Mounting evidence shows that deaths at the hand of the police disproportionately impact people of certain races and ethnicities, pointing to systemic racism in policing. Recent high-profile killings by police in the USA have prompted calls for more extensive and public data reporting on police violence. This study examines the presence and extent of underreporting of police violence in US government-run vital registration data offers a method for correcting and reporting these datasets, and presents revised estimates of deaths due to police violence in the USA. So, the background to the study is that, hey, there's been a lot of discourse about systemic racism in policing recently, and there's also been more calls towards more extensive and public data reporting on police violence. And this study is going to go through a US government vital registration data uh, set, and their breakdown of how much police killings there are in the United States of America and explain sort of how there is underreporting by this US government institution when it comes to this specifically and how to do the counting better and why the difference is significant and it's important to talk about it. Methods. We compare data from the USA National Vital Statistics System, NVSS, to three non-governmental open source databases on police violence. These three are, Fatal Encounters, Mapping Police Violence, and The Counted. We extracted and standardized the age, sex, US state of death registration, year of death, and race and ethnicity, non-Hispanic white, non-Hispanic black, non-Hispanic of other race, and Hispanic of any race, of each decadent uh, for all data sources and used a network meta-regression to quantify the rate of underreporting within the NVSS. Using these rates to inform correlation correction factors, we provided adjusted estimates of deaths due to police violence for all states, ages, sexes, and racial and ethnic groups from 1980 to 2019 across the USA. Across all races and states in the USA, we estimate 30,800 deaths from police violence between 1980 and 2018. This represents 17,100 more deaths than reported by the NVSS. Over this time period, the age standardized mortality rate due to police violence was highest in non-Hispanic black people per 100,000, followed by Hispanic people of any race, non-Hispanic people, and non-Hispanic people of other races. This variation is further affected by the decedent sex and shows large discrepancies between states. Between 1980 and 2018, the NVSS did not report 55.5% of all deaths attributable to police violence. When aggregating all races, the age standardized mortality rate due to police violence was 0.25 per 100,000 in the 1980s and 0.34 per 100,000 in the 2010s, an increase of 38.4% of the period of study. So what this is demonstrating here is that the NVSS uh, has undercounted the amount of deaths by police violence by 55.5% and that the overall rate of police violence has gone up since the 1980s. Now, notably, and don't misinterpret this, this is not a sort of breakdown of instances in which the police killings have been wrong or unjustified. This is just overall police killings as a whole, so don't mix that up. But having the data on overall police killings is still important when it comes to national, international comparisons of the behavior of police departments and in important figures when it comes to uh, discrepancies in killings 
between different racial groups and how that may conflate and interlock with different environmental influences. Interpretation. We found that more than half of all deaths due to police violence that we estimated in the USA from 1980 to 2018 were unreported in the NVSS. Compounding this, we found substantial differences in the age standardized mortality rate due to police over time and by racial and ethnic groups in the USA. Proven public health intervention strategies are needed to address these systematic biases. State level estimates allow for appropriate targeting of these strategies to address police violence and improve its reporting. Uh, funding, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, National Institute of Minority Health and Health, Disparity, health Disparities, and National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. So basically the purpose of this is they compared the official statistics from the NVSS, the USA National Vital Statistics System, and find they dramatically undercounted the amount of deaths attributed to police violence. So let's get some more information on the methodology. So you might ask, why did they use these forms of like data sets and compare them to the National Vital Statistics System? Why are they the ones that they used? Why do we believe that they are better? Well, there are several reasons for this. Uh, number one, they talk about this previously. There has been substantial evidence previously to indicate that the sort of like government offices or NVSS often misclassifies and undercounts deaths of police violence in USA vital registration data. So this is what you can find here. Citations 18 to 21 uh, on the second page of the study on page 1240 of volume 398 of the Lancet. So you can take a look at that there. So there's documented evidence that there is systemic misclassification and undercounting of deaths due to police violence in the USA. So what they decide to do is they decide to look at open source compilations of police killings and then compare three different ones to make sure that the results are somewhat consistent so that they aren't all over the place because that might indicate that these decentralized non-government operated sort of sources aren't as reliable, but they were pretty close to one another. And they congregated these three, compared them to the National Vital Statistics System, did necessary controls for situations in which certain types of sort of data sets uh, weren't held to the gold standard for the specific study, and then ran the numbers. So the three ones they used was fatal encounters, mapping police violence, and they counted, and then compared that to the National Vital Statistics System. Um, so here you talk about the type of organization it is, the years of data that were available for each of the organizations, uh, the case definitions. So the definition for like what constituted a like police killing and the data collection method used. So the data collection method used is the same for all three of these uh, open source sort of compilations of uh, police killings. While for the National Vital Statistics System, it uses death certificates, medical examiner and coroner determines cause of death. Now, source of bias. So here they looked at all of these four different sources and saw, okay, where could they be wrong? Where could they be missing? So uh, for the fatal encounters, the issues were with the case definition and the percentage missing in race or ethnicity. And as you can see, 22% of these data sets had no data on the race or ethnicity. For the mapping police violence, the definition was fine. And the uh, so that wasn't an issue as compared to the failed encounters one, but the issue was the percentage missing in racial ethnicity. There was still 9%, which is a pretty high percentage. Now, the best data point that they saw here was the counted, which was the product of the Guardian newspaper. And this was the gold standard because the definition, case definition was good. So people killed by the police and other law enforcement agencies and the percentage of cases missing racial ethnicity is only 2%. So that's the gold standard. That's what they're going to adjust for to ensure that the other, you know, like to meet that level by running regression analyses. And then the final one, National Vital Statistics System, the issues with that has to do with the data collection method. So what they talked about before with the systemic undercounting and misclassifications, as well as the percentage missing in race or ethnicity, which is 15% here, which is almost as high as the fatal encounters one. So that's why they chose these different data sets and how they adjusted and what standard they held them to. Now, Notable points here when it comes to their findings. I'm going to read the first paragraph of the discussion here. Our analysis of police violence in the USA show that the NVSS misclassified and subsequently underreported 55.5% of our estimated deaths from police violence between 1980 and 2018. Consistent with the estimated rates of fatal police violence in this group, 
the highest underreporting in the NVSS occurred for deaths of black Americans at 59.5%. What this means here is that out of the deaths that the NVSS didn't count or misclassified, 59.5% of those were deaths of black Americans. So the amount of, of, of undercounting wasn't equal across demographic groups. It disproportionately undercounted deaths of black Americans. However, the issue of underreporting does not only affect black Americans. The NVSS missed 56.1% of deaths of non-Hispanic people, 32.6% of non-Hispanic people of other races, and 50% of Hispanic people of any race. The police have disproportionately killed black people at a rate of 3.5 times higher than white people and have killed Hispanic and indigenous people disproportionately as well. The rate of fatal police violence was higher in every year for black Americans than for white Americans. In the USA, more males died from police violence in 2019 than from environmental heat and cold exposure, Hodgkin's lymphoma, testicular cancer, appendicitis, exposure to the forces of nature, and sexually transmitted diseases. So more people died of police violence than all the things that I just listed out there. Now, there is also specific breakdowns for the different parts of the country that they're uh, talking about. I think this could be found um, here specifically. So here you can see like overall which counties tend to classify them accurately and which don't tend to classify them as accurately. I think they uh, specifically say here that um, from 1998 to 2018, the top five states with the highest underreporting rates were Oklahoma, Wyoming, Louisiana, Alabama, and Nebraska. Those are the five ones with the highest rate of underreporting. So it's not the same all across the entirety of the nation. So for limitations of the study, just to make sure we have that here, the study does not calculate or address non-fatal injuries um, inflicted by the police. So basically this only measures police killings, not police like use of force or violence or stuff like that. We also excluded police officers killed by civilians and executions of our analysis of police and violence. Yeah, they didn't include this because the studies of police violence on the populace, not the other way around. This data can be found elsewhere and should be analyzed separately. Um, this analysis does not include military police and residents who might have been harmed by military police uh, in the USA or abroad. Additionally, open source data for this study do not cover fatal police violence in US territories. Therefore, violence in these locations would need to be analyzed separately. So this doesn't cover like uh, U uh, police violence in territories that the US owns, like um, I think Puerto Rico. So like Puerto Rico, for instance, is not included in this, which yeah, it's not like significant like limitation. But finally, our modeling framework assumes constant underreporting in NVSS across age and sex, an assumption that might not hold in all cases. And our estimation strategy applies national level age and sex trends to all states and races. We encourage further research to improve the estimation of police violence by sex and age. So what they mean by this is that like the numbers of specifically like breakdown across like individual states when it comes to undercounting. So this may be swayed or conflated a little bit by the fact that they use national standards for age and sex and apply them to all states when there might be minuscule variations between the different states when it comes to these demographic breakdowns, but it doesn't have any significant effect on like as a whole, the numbers that were found in the study entirely, just specifically for the state by state analysis, it may not be 100% accurate, but still decently accurate here. So that's what uh, this is saying, basically. And also when it comes to the estimation of violence by age and sex, uh, which once again, is only relevant for the, the state by state versions, because they use federal data, but they're turning up with federal numbers, and there is no risk of it being inaccurate. But if you use federal data, to talk about underreporting and overreporting or whatever in state by state levels, then there might be minute variations there. And then there is some more about specifically how like it doesn't include, for example, like non-binary people or like you know uh, transgender people. Um, so, for instance, let's see here. Uh, this approach erases the existence of non-cisgender people and massive disproportionate high rates of killing against transgender and the most accurately black transgender people. So there is not as much intersectionality in the analysis as there could have been. Yeah, once again, just generally because of the fact that there was a bunch of data missing in the NBSS, they use like data trends from like other forms of studies and uh, the rest of it to fill in those gaps, which is the purpose of the study really. Overall, the purpose of the study is to demonstrate that by some wings of US government bodies, the portion of police killings is dramatically undercounted 
And this was demonstrated by comparing it to a bunch of other non-governmental open source data sets on this. And this can be used to number one, ensure that we have strategies in place in order to prevent the government undercounting of police killings. Uh, number two, provide better breakdowns of the issues of police brutality in the US compared to other countries and maybe comparing policing strategies and stuff like that. And number three, have more accurate breakdowns of the demographic and race breakdown of police killings so that we have all the data and so that certain analyses that may have been done on NVSS data uh, aren't entirely, uh, you know, like reflective. And that's what this study basically tried to do. And once again, just another caveat, just to ensure nobody misunderstands this, the studies and the numbers are for all police killings as a whole and doesn't talk about whether or not the police killing was justified or unjustified or whatever. It just talks about police action as a whole and the outcomes therein. Now, you can make inferences on justification and stuff by comparing it to other, you know, reasonable examples when you look at, for example, like violent crime rates across different states. So, for example, Mapping Police Violence has a great infographic on this where they demonstrate that the likelihood of killings by police doesn't actually correlate with like violent crime rates or at all. It has more to do with police department specific behavior and handling of this. So here you can see a graph talking about the levels of violent crime in the US cities uh, compared to the police killing rates. So the squares are the rates of police killing and the X's are the violent crime rates. So as you can see, there is basically no correlation um, between the rates of police killings and violent crime rates, indicating that it doesn't necessarily have much to do with the violent crime rates and stuff like that when it comes to the justification of police killing. It may have more to do with specifically the way the police handle these situations. And that's the point of the study, and it's pretty good, and it's published in The Lancet, which is a very reputable journal. So uh, I think it can be, uh, be taken pretty well uh, on its face right now. And the major limitations don't really have much to do specifically with any of the key findings of the documents, just specifically maybe like there might be a few inaccuracies when it comes to specific state-by-state -state breakdowns, which for the data they include here in their findings uh, page isn't relevant because this is like nationwide federal stuff. And then the fact that they didn't include like U.S. territories, which nobody really talks about U.S. territories when it comes to discussions of police brutality and stuff like that anyway, which, hey, probably should have discussions about that as well. But yeah, generally limitations are not substantial uh, for this study uh, at all for the most part. So yeah, it's been the first episode of whatever I decided to call the series study buddy. Maybe we'll see. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed.